Hey everyone, welcome to the second video of Research Bus channel and today let's look at the model interpretability over the Titanic dataset. So Titanic survival analysis is a quite common problem for every machine learning and the deep learning practitioner. And in this problem, the objective is we have some information about the passengers in the Titanic ship and then we need to identify that after the shipwreck whether the passengers are going to survive or not. And we need to build the deep learning and the machine learning model over here. And then we need to input the features, the information about the passengers. And then we need to predict the whether the passengers are going to survive or not. So let's try to solve this problem using the deep learning model. And then this is a quite simple deep learning model that we can think of. And here we are feeding in the input features like the passengers age, the passengers gender and the passengers embarking point. And then we are trying to find out that, okay, whether the passenger is going to survive or not after the shipwreck. And after that, once we have this model defined, we need to interpret the deep learning model. By interpretation, we mean that what are the features that are responsible for the particular prediction and what are the neuron, role of neuron in the given layer to find, to give out that prediction and what is the role of the neuron across the features to give that prediction. So these are the three points that we are going to cover today uh, by after defining the deep learning model. Now let's look at the code for the deep learning models prediction and interpretability. So very first we are importing the libraries, the PyTorch, Captum and the NumPy library. And after that we are reading the data and we are applying some processing over the data like converting the variables into one hot encoding and filling the variables with the statistical methods like mean we can use the median also and uh, after that we have the data set defined then we are passing the data set uh, and converting it into the numpy array and then splitting it into the training and the test data sets and after that we are defining the architecture for the deep learning model so this deep learning model will have first layer which have 12 neurons and the second layer would have the eight neurons so we are using the 12 neurons because we have the 12 input features and after that we are passing it to the hidden layer uh, with the eight neurons and after that in the output layer we are having the two neurons for each class the class 0 and the class 1 and uh, we will be defining the models code here so we are first defining the first input layer and uh, after that we are defining the second layer and uh, after that we are defining the sigmoid activation function over that and uh, then the output layer and then the softmax function over the outputs prediction so that we can get the prediction between 0 and 1 only and uh, after that defining the forward function which takes the input and which calls the first layer first and then the sigmoid function over that then uses the output of this in the second layer and calling the sigmoid activation function again over that and after that passing it to the output layer and calling the softmax function over it so that we can have output between 0 and 1. Then we are defining the object for, uh, for this uh, deep learning model and then we are applying the condition that if the pre-trained model is already available we can simply load that we don't need to train but in case we don't have the pre-trained model we need to train that and uh, we are training the model here with the criteria like we are using the loss function uh, so cross entropy loss function here which can calculate the error in the predictions and it can propagate the error back to the network so that model can be trained and fine-tuned and after that we are defining the optimizer so the work of this optimizer is to update the weights uh, once we are back propagating the error and uh, after that we are converting the input into the pytorch tensor from the numpy array and we are in the same way we are converting the labels also into the tensor and uh, after that we are running over multiple epochs in each epoch we will be training the data across the whole samples and whole data set and after that we are taking out the output and then we are passing it to the loss functions and then we are like 
zeroing the gradients of the optimizer and uh, why we are using this is because let's say we are somewhere in the middle of the epoch let's say we are in the 50th epoch so we want the optimizer to forget all the previous calculations and to start again after having the loss of this epoch only so that we can update the weights corresponding to this epoch only and uh, then we are back propagating the error uh, and after that we are like updating the weights using this optimizer.step and uh, then we are saving the model to the particular directory so after that we are going to evaluate the model's performance over the train data and the test data so this is the part one of the objective and we are getting the accuracy of around 81.6 that is 82 percent over the test data now the part two is to interpret this deep learning model and find out the reasons for the particular prediction and how we can further fine tune it so let's apply the integrated gradients to answer the very first question that what are the importances of features across the whole data set across the whole collection of sample so we are using the integrated gradients object here and we are using the attribute method of integrated gradients to find out the attributions for the particular target class that is target class 1 and uh, after that we are taking a look at this attribution and uh, we are detaching it because now we don't want any more into the computation graph and we simply want to look at the values that this attribution have so let's look at the importances of the features and uh, we can average the attributions across the whole data set let's say we are having the 393 samples correspondingly and uh, for each sample we are having the attribution value for each of the feature now to get the interpretation of this attribution value we need to take the average or we need to take the median for this attribution value for the whole data set so that we are going to do here and uh, then we are plotting it and uh, we are finding out that the age and being male are the most important features for the model and the least important features can be the embankment points and the classes so in this way we get the feature importances and uh, the second thing is we need to find out the distribution of this attribution value also for the particular feature so let's say we are having the average of 0 0.5 for age but if we look at the distribution it may be possible that only in some of the values we are getting the so much attribution but for the other samples we are not getting the attribution values as good so then this is a problem for the model which we need to work upon so simply let's look at the distribution of attribution value for the number of siblings and uh, once we look at the distribution we can find out that few of the attribution values are negative but most of the attribution values are around zero only by the zero attribution value we means that it don't have much impact on the model's prediction and uh, if we look at the attribution values mean over here we would be finding out that it's a little bit lower and it's the negative value which we can also find out from the distribution then let's look at the importance of neuron in the particular layer so we let's say in the first layer we are having the 12 neurons now what is the importance of the fifth neuron in that layer that we need to identify so again we are going to use the layer conductance to find out this and we are going to use the attribute method of layer conductance to get the conductance values and uh, after that we are going to plot these conductance values for all the 12 neurons of the first layer we define the first layer here the net dot sigmoid one and uh, after that we are once we are having the importances of neurons we can see that tenth neuron is the most important one to determine the model's prediction and uh, after that we can also look at the distribution of these neurons across the whole sample of data set in the same way we looked for the integrated gradient attribution values so uh, in this way we can we can further make the interpretations that how the model is working and after that let's try to answer the third question and the third question is what is the input features role 
for the neurons performance that uh, how the input features are playing the role in the output of the particular neuron so we can say that uh, we can define the neurons let's say we took up the 10th neuron from the first layer and then we can look at the 0th neuron from the first layer also and uh, after that once we look at the importance of this of that neuron across the features then we would be finding out that age is the most responsible feature for the neurons activation and uh, if we look at the importances for the neuron 10 then we can find out that being male is the most important feature for the neurons performance and neurons activation so in this way we identified and we determined the interpretability of the defined deep learning model and then we can further make out some of the assumptions so that we can improve this deep learning model and we can at least like uh, like propagate this information to the others that why we are getting the particular kind of prediction uh, thanks for watching the video and there would be many more videos such like this in the next rounds thank you